Welcome to Gospel of Glory with Pastor Patrick Nugenda, a teaching ministry that for over 18 years has focused on revealing the glory of Christ. Hallelujah! And now, here is Pastor Patrick. Oh, hallelujah. Welcome to the Gospel of Glory. Today I'm going to speak on the only power of God to salvation. The only power of God to salvation. Praise God. So let me take you to the uh, book of Romans, the epistle of Paul to Romans, chapter 1, and verse 16. Uh, praise God. The Bible says this, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from, from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Praise God. Now, these are very powerful words. Praise God. I will come back to this later, but it's just to show you that according to the Bible, the only power of God to salvation is the gospel. Praise God. Now, we may think God can pass through different ways, but it's just our opinions. But when we, you study carefully the Bible, you can realize that the only power of God. Now, I'm not just trying to mess up with words. I'm just choosing my words carefully. I'm saying the only power of God to salvation. If God has to bring salvation in any aspect of your life, it has to go through the gospel. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's only through the gospel. Any other way, it may be man invented way or our opinion, but when you study the Bible, you, you come up, you can't miss this conclusion that the only way God can bring salvation in your life through the gospel. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, uh, first and foremost, you have to understand how the salvation comes to us. How do we receive salvation? How are we saved? Praise God. Now, when you go to Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, Go with me in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. The Bible says this, By grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Now, is that to show the gift? The faith is a gift of God. God gave us faith as a gift. But then, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? Hearing the word of God. That means, the moment you are li listening or hearing, the gospel, hearing the, the word of God, faith comes to you as a gift, and then you are saved. So God has to use the gospel, has to use the message of what he did through Christ Jesus for you to believe, and after you believe, you receive salvation. Because the Bible says grace, we are saved by grace through, the, through faith. The Bible says that by grace we are saved through faith. That means without faith it is impossible. To be saved. And the Bible says it's not for you. It's the gift of God. But how this gift of faith comes to us? Through the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the moment we are listening, hearing the word, the word of God, hearing the message of Christ, hearing the message of the cross, hearing the message of what God did for us on the cross, the Bible says that we are, we are receiving faith. Faith is imparted to our spirit as a gift. Then we are saved. Praise God. Then we are saved. It has to go through faith. It has to be through faith. It must go through faith. There's, there's, there are no two ways. There are no two ways to be saved. It has to go through faith. You have to believe. That's the only way to be. That's the only way to, to be saved. The, the reason God put this message on me. It's just to try to convince you that that thing called faith is very important. I know whenever we are trying to teach on faith, 
There are people who say, oh, I know, we are trying to escape from the reality of life. We are not trying to escape, escape from anything. We are trying to emphasize the reason or the way of the kingdom to receive anything from God. I know someone may still be asking, why then God has to use faith? Why can't he, can't he just go ahead and give me whatever he wants to give me? He had to go through faith. My friend, there's no any other way. Now, <laughs> I know someone may be thinking, okay, now, there's a way God can help our mind. For instance, if God will stand out in the sky there and they cry with this divine voice of God, Say, oh, I am God. You have to be saved. And if just a miracle happened in the, in the sky, in the heavens, evident to everyone, I think most of people will believe. No, they won't believe. <laughs> they won't believe because they saw this. They won't. Someone will think if, for instance, the, uh, the sky will open and the sea hell and the fire there, and the people who went there, people think now, in that case, I think all, almost the whole world will be saved. No, it won't. God loves this world. If there was any other way to save this world, God will have used it. If, it um, if we are told that the only way to salvation is through the gospel, that means that's what we need. If there was any other way for us to be saved, or if there was any other way for, for us to be to receive salvation, God would have used it. If you are told that the, the power of God, the, the gospel is the power of God to salvation, that means it is the only way. Because it's a bring faith. The gospel brings faith, and, the, and, the, and the, through faith we are saved. Hallelujah. So let me take you to this book of Luke chapter 16. Go with me in the book of Luke chapter 16. I want to show you something there. Luke chapter 16. Let me start with verse 27. We may be familiar with this story uh, of Lazarus the poor, Lazarus who died, and the John, uh, the, the bosom of Abraham, according to the Bible. And then there was, there was this rich person who died, and he went in the side of the devil. And a lot happened there. I don't want to go into the all details there. But then, let me uh, read from verse 27. The Bible said this. Then he said, this is, the, this is the rich person speaking. Now, you have to get it. We, I always say there's nothing wrong with being rich. You know, that, the, the focus here is not being rich. Because there are people who are rich and yet they are saved. So, the focus is not being rich or being poor. Praise God. Now, anyway, let me go straight to what I want to share with you here. Uh, verse 27, Bible says this. Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you will send him to my father's house. That means uh, that rich person was talking to Abraham. Send Lazarus to my father's house. For I have five brothers that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Now there are people who are argue, there are people who argue about the hell, they say hell is just an idea. Hell is not an idea. Jesus talked about hell, hell is real in the Bible, and the hell is, is, is real. It's not just an idea. It's not just to frighten people to believe in God. No. No, there is hell, and, the, and the those who not believe will go to hell. So hell is not like an idea, it's not just a, a, a philosophy, no. <laughs> hell is real. Praise God. Look at verse 29. Abraham said to him, praise God. Listen to this. That's what I want you to notice. Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophet. Let them hear them. <laughs> In this conversation, Father Abraham is replying to this rich who was requesting for someone to come from the dead and to go back to their father, to his father's house to testify to his, to his brethren. And they look at the response of, 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 of Abraham. He said, no, 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 they have prophet. In other words, Father Abraham is saying they have preachers over there. Let them listen to them. Look at how Father Abraham is emphasizing on the preachers. People who are preaching. Now, the conversation is not, is not over yet. Now, look at verse 30. He said, no, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them 
from the dead, they will repent. You see, we are not the only one to think that God, there is a way God can help our mind just to manifest something to help us believe. <laughs> see, even this guy, he said, probably if someone will come from the dead, I think they will believe. Look at what he said. Let me go back to that verse 30. And then he said, no, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. Imagine you know someone who was, who was dead, buried. He was uh, your neighbor probably. And they, it's, it's known this guy was dead. And then you, he, he came back from the dead testifying there is a hell somewhere. There is a hell. You have to repent. You see, now in our normal mind, we think that will help. In the natural understanding. I think, yeah, that, that can help. See now? I look at the, this was of Father Abraham. He said, 31. But <laughs> when I read this, I said, oh, this is very powerful. My God. But he said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophet. Now, hear Moses and the prophet here. I told you, they are the symbols of preachers. They are symbols of people who preach the gospel. He said, if they do not hear Moses and the prophet, neither will they be persuaded through one rise from the dead. Now, this is the talking of the Spirit. God knows us. He knows our, how we are built, how we are wired. If you cannot hear and, and believe through the person who is preaching to me, I won't even hear from someone even though he is from the dead. I'm trying to show you that if there was another way for God to save people, he could have used it. Look at this dead poor rich guy. Look at this dead rich guy. He requested Abraham. Would you send someone from the dead? Probably. If someone is from the dead, they will listen. Abraham said, no, no, no. If they cannot hear Pastor Patrick, they wouldn't even listen, even if someone is from the dead. If you cannot hear Moses and the prophet, I've told you, these are the symbols of people who are preaching, giving out the words of God. Now, why then is the only way? It's because the only way to salvation is through faith. Because faith is the only way to salvation. Now, all these people, all these evidences, who, even though we think they could help, eh, they won't bring faith. They will bring evidence. They will bring something in our mind. And yet, salvation, we are saved through faith. The Bible says, don't forget, by grace we are saved through faith. It had to be through faith. Now, tell me how someone will believe if God will appear in the heaven. It won't be any faith, any faith anymore. It won't be faith anymore. No. It will be something evident to all. It can convince our mind, but it won't convince our spirit. There's a way, the only thing that can convince our spirit is just the gospel. Praise God. Hallelujah. I say praise God. Now, when Jesus rose from the dead, many people uh, used to think, why then Jesus didn't just reveal to everyone? In the city? He has power to, he, he could reveal himself to everyone and tell him, hey, I'm Jesus, I'm here. Why did he do that? He didn't, why did he do that? Because he didn't want the salvation to be based on just physical evidences. Because the way to salvation is through faith. And the faith comes by hearing, hearing the gospel. Hallelujah. I hope you are getting my point here. Now, let me take you to another verse. Go with me in the book of Luke chapter 20, 20, 24. Let me read from verse 25. Now, this is a story after Jesus rose from the dead. Remember, the disciples dispersed all over the, the cities. And this, it happened that two disciples were on their way to Emmaus. And then they were discussing about Jesus, about what happened, and about the recent news that some of the, uh, the, the women from their camp went to the tomb and they couldn't find Jesus. So they were discussing this on their way. And Jesus joined the conversation. Look at this. Look at the verse 20, 20, 25. Look at verse 25. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and the slow of heart to believe in all that 
the prophet have spoken. Ought not the Christ to, to have suffered this thing and to enter into his glory? Praise God 27, look at 27. And uh, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he, uh, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the thing concerning himself. He was there. No, I, was, I, I used to wonder on this verse. He was there, right there. Why can't he just say, hey, I'm Jesus. I'm rose, I rose from the dead. Why are you still doubting? He didn't do that. No. He gave himself the pain of going through the scriptures. The Bible says he expounded from Moses and all the scriptures, expanding things concerning himself. Imagine, why going through the scriptures instead of just going straight to, hey, I'm here. I rose from the dead. Look at my, look at my, my hands. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. This shows us that he knew that the most important here is for them to believe through the scriptures. They had to believe through the word. That because it's the only way to salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know some people, when he, he has a certain need or a certain challenge somewhere and you want to bring the Bible, say, I know that those things. I know those things. <laughs> you know what they want? Actually, what they, they want to suggest, can Jesus just appear in front of me like this just to answer to my question? No, that is not the only, that is not the way to go for it. No, that's not the way of the kingdom. That is not the way of the kingdom. Imagine Jesus himself was there, yet he did that point to himself. He went through the scriptures. Praise God. Hallelujah. What am I saying? I'm saying the way to salvation is through faith. And faith comes by hearing, hearing the gospel. That means the gospel is the power of God. Now, when we talk about this, the salvation, there are people who think salvation is just to go to heaven. No, 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 no. no. Salvation is not just going to heaven. Salvation is escaping the corruption of this world. Salvation is to pass from death to life. Praise God. Salvation is to have received, to receive the nature of righteousness of God. Salvation means to, to receive the citizenship of heaven. See, now, it's the whole package. Salvation is the whole package of the life of God. So when you point out, point out something like salvation, you think it's just to go to heaven, it's just one thing among others. And when the Bible says that the gospel is the way or the, the gospel is the power to salvation. That means in any area where you want salvation, in area where you want change, the power of God is the gospel. I don't know whether you, you are getting my point here. The power of God will show the man again. Hallelujah. I don't know whether you are getting my point, but I'm showing you the power of God in that gospel. That's what the apostle said. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. We have to value the gospel. We have to value the word of God. When you have a need, a need in a certain area, and someone wants to bring the word of God, don't say, no, 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 I know that. Don't underestimate that, because that is the power of God. So the moment you underestimate that, so what else is going to save you? Because that is the power of God to salvation. To salvation. Hallelujah. Someone may, may be in need of money. And someone wants to bring the verses, want to bring a scripture about money in the kingdom of God. How it works. Someone says, no, 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 no. I don't need that. I need money. What you need is a salvation. And I'll be I'm showing you the power of God to salvation is the gospel. That is the way to salvation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Go. Okay, now let me take you back to that verse we read of Romans chapter, chapter 1 and verse 16. Go back again to that verse. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. The Bible says this. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Look at verse 17. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, 
the just shall live by faith. Now, Bible says, in this verse, after, right after we are shown that the gospel is the power of God, we are told, the next verse, we are told, verse 17, that the, the just shall live by faith. The righteous shall live by faith. This is the law of the kingdom. The moment you are called a believer, in the kingdom of God, if you are called a believer, if believer is your nature, if you are a believer, if you are a Christian, this is the law of life. The law of life that concerns you is the law of faith. The Bible says the just, the righteous, who you are, shall live by faith. That means in any aspect of your life, you shall live by faith. That's the law that concerns you. Praise God. The moment you step into Christianity, this is the law. This is the law that concerns you. Everything that concerns you, everything that concerns you shall live by faith. Yourself, you shall live by faith. Your health, shall, you shall live by faith. Your finances shall live by faith. Shall live by faith. Praise God. Your family shall live by faith. The moment you step into Christianity, this is the law that concerns you. You shall live by faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me close my short message with this verse of uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Look at verse 6. The Bible says this. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to, to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, God is in the hidden places. God is not evident with this optical eyes. When you read the Hebrew chapter 11, all the heroes, we call them the heroes of faith, all of them live by faith. No wonder the Bible says that they, they give a good testimony, a good report to God. Praise God, because they live by faith. Look at this verse uh, uh, 13. The Bible says, these, these all died in faith. <laughs> They died in the faith. Not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them. Embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and the pilgrims on the earth. Praise God. Hallelujah. These all these people, they died in the faith. Praise God. Not only that, look at this verse of uh, 39. And, and all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith. Did not receive the promise. Having good received good testimony, good report. They receive a good report. It's, it's like someone in heaven was was writing, yeah, that person lived by faith. A, a good testimony. That one lived by faith. A good this. All of them, the, all these receive a good testimony. Praise God. So we can't ex escape the way of the kingdom. That is a pattern of the kingdom. We are following the pattern of the kingdom. So it, it was to encourage you. To always esteem the way of faith. To always regard with high esteem the way of faith. To regard with high esteem the power of God, the gospel. Never underestimate the power of the gospel. Never underestimate the word of God. Always keep it to the high regard. Why? Because the only power of God to salvation. The moment your heart start thinking that there is another, any other way to bring salvation to your life, then you are misled. Praise God. You have to conclude and be persuaded in your heart that the only way to salvation is through the gospel. Amen? So this is all I have for now. I hope to see you when I release another video. So share this message with others. You can even subscribe if you haven't done so. Praise God. So you can, we can grow this channel and to impact more lives. Praise God. So. You are so blessed. See you next time. Thank you.